How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be diagnosing some very common issues on a gas-powered wheelbarrow compressor. So let's get right into it. So I have a gas-powered compressor here, and it is powered by a Honda GX160, so that's a five and a half horsepower engine. And the purpose of this video is just gonna be taking you through the steps of how to diagnose one of the common issues with these compressors, which is when it's running, it kicks down to lower RPM, but then when you start using your air, it doesn't kick back up. So just a brief explanation on how one of these compressor systems work, it's very simple. So let's say that your tanks are completely empty. You're gonna fire up your engine and your engine's going to be running at high RPM the throttle lever right there is gonna be all the way to the left. That's high RPM. Now what's gonna happen is because there's a pulley on the engine, pulley on the pump, and there's a belt connecting it, your engine is always spinning your pump. So you could imagine that once the tanks get filled, you don't want your engine running at high RPM. Once the tanks get to a certain pressure, which is normally around 120 or 125 PSI, the valve opens up and allows air from the tank to go through either tube or cable. And that tube or cable runs all the way up to your throttle control piston, which then kicks your throttle lever here down to low RPM. So now your engine is running at a low RPM and the tanks aren't being filled at maximum capacity. And that is controlled by your pilot valve, which is the little guy up here. Then as you use air and your main tank gets below, let's say 90 to 100 PSI, your valve is gonna close and not send any air. And the spring return in your throttle control piston is going to return the throttle back to high RPM and it's gonna start the process all over again. So that's just a brief explanation of how these systems work. Now, now, this check valve has a little vent here. So when it goes to kick the engine back up, it needs to vent the excess pressure. So if, if your little vent screen here is clogged, like they normally are when guys don't run clean air filters, then your check valve isn't going to be able to vent that extra pressure and your machine isn't going to kick back up because instead of venting that extra pressure, it's going to be running that pressure through the line and all that pressure is going to be holding your throttle in the low RPM stage. So ideally, the first thing you wanna be removing is this little check valve vent. It's the easiest and simplest thing to do. You take a wrench and you open that up and you see if it's clogged. If it is clogged, you can clean it out, put it back in, and maybe your compressor will run normally again. However, if I'm gonna spend the time to do something like that, especially if it's for a customer, I'm gonna take the entire check valve apart to inspect the check valve, lubricate everything, make sure it's completely clean in there, and then I'll go ahead and reassemble. And that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. Now, because this already ran, and I know that it just didn't throttle it back up to return, I know that the line is clean enough but one of the things that I like to do is simply come down here to this fitting. And what you're gonna do is you're going to remove this fitting if it has a free spinning nut on this end, which we can see it doesn't. So in order to get this off, you have to unbolt the bullwhip throttle control piston and then unthread the piston from this line. Then you can go ahead and take your compressor and back purge the line. That just ensures that the line doesn't have any debris in them. Now to remove these, I simply use a set of channel lock pliers on the end there. And then using a small adjustable wrench, I'm going to hold the fitting and I'm going to spin off the throttle control piston. Now there is going to be a spring in there, so it will always return back to the high RPM stage. So basically the air pressure pushing forward is what throttles your engine down. Now with this off, I normally try to wipe away a lot of the red Loctite that the factory uses when they assemble this. And then what I'm gonna do is pull down on this and put a little bit of three in one oil in there and just work the piston up and down to make sure that it's lubricated properly. Now, sometimes these pistons can seize. So if you have a compressor that runs, but it won't kick down or up, then it could just be a seized little piston here. Now your compressor may not have the air vein piston. It may have the bullwhip throttle control, which I refer to all the time. I pretty much call them a bullwhip throttle control, whether it's the cable type or just the air tube one. But uh, this one is basically the same. Instead of having the piston up on the top of the engine with an air line, this has the piston down below at the check valve, and then it runs a physical cable up to control your throttle at the engine. Now, I actually prefer the air line with the piston over this, which is an actual bullwhip throttle control, and it's simply because you guys are gonna notice that uh, this cable is broken. So what happened was the inner tube ended up getting corroded, and when this went to pop to throttle the engine down, it snapped the cable. So now the customer complained that 
it wouldn't throttle up or down. And uh, it was just simply because the cable was seized inside of the liner. So I'm starting to find that these are more common, but a simple thing you can do is simply just lubricate your line similar to how you would lubricate any other cable. I've gone ahead and cleaned out the red Loctite and I've lubricated it just using a little bit of three in one oil here. So back to our compressor. So with the line off of our piston, I'm gonna use my air gun here and back purge the line. If you put air through the line and you hear a pop, chances are that was a little piece of debris inside of that line and it's just gonna simply blow out. So I've blown out my line. So now I can basically rule out the piston or the line as causing a problem. Next step is we're going to remove the vent. These are always running construction sites they have two air filters on the compressor a lot of times i've seen guys not run air filters because the old filters got clogged it sucks in dirt and debris into the compressor here the pistons then send that air down into your check valve assembly and all of that debris ends up clogging that vent down there so we're just going to use an adjustable wrench and we're going to remove that vent so with the vent removed you're going to flip it over and look at this guys it is completely packed full of debris. So what's happening is the compressor is trying to kick down and release that pressure so that your engine can throttle itself down. But because it can't release that pressure through this little vent here, it ends up shutting your engine down. And that's normally the cause is one of these gets clogged. So we're just gonna go ahead and clean that out with a little pick. And then I also like to run them in my ultrasonic cleaner. So while that vent is in my ultrasonic cleaner, I'm going to come down to the valve assembly here. So I'm going to disconnect this fitting. So all I had to do was back this fitting off here. I spun this fitting to the side just so that we don't damage the copper tube here. So the next thing is we're going to take this whole valve assembly and rotate it counterclockwise to unthread it from the fitting down below. Now these valves should have these flat sides right there and you should be able to take a wrench or a set of channel lock pliers. And then, like I said, we're simply going to rotate counterclockwise and unthread the whole valve assembly. Now just be careful, there's gonna be a little spring and I believe it's a disc on top of the spring. So we're going to remove this and we're gonna come over here to my little paper towel here and you're gonna see. So here's that little brass or porcelain disc, whatever they use here and then the spring is there too. So I'm just gonna take that off for now. What we're gonna do next is just make sure that little hole there is clean and free of debris. So I'm probably just going to use my compressor gun here and then I'll just go ahead and blow through that. So I know that's clean and free of debris. And then we'll go ahead and take our valve assembly here over to the workbench. Now we're going to want to clamp our valve assembly into what's known as a woodworking vise. If you don't have a woodworking vise, just take a couple pieces of wood and sandwich them in between your vise jaws and the valve assembly. Next up is you're gonna either have some Phillips screws or in this case, we're gonna have some hex screws. So basically we can just use an Allen wrench. I like these because they're least likely to strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four screws. Now, once you get those screws out, in the case of these Allen keys, they were a 960 fourths. And I'm just going to take a small hammer and I'm gonna tap on the flat side there. And we're just gonna to try to break it loose because there's usually some kind of little seal in here. You don't wanna hit it too hard but you can see that we're loose now. And once we lift this off, there's going to be a rubber diaphragm underneath here. So we have our hole and that leads up to our throttle control. But because my machine kicked down and it just wouldn't kick back up, I know that's clean and free of debris, but I'm gonna go ahead and blow that out anyways. We're just gonna set this off to the side for now. And we're gonna come up to our rubber diaphragm and we're just simply going to peel this off. And there's gonna be a brass little plunger underneath of it. And you're just gonna wanna inspect your diaphragm. This one looks like it's in okay shape. And after you've inspected it, so you know that uh, everything's okay, just go ahead and put it off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and remove the plunger here. This might be a little difficult, but you should be able to get a fingernail underneath of it. And we're going to pull out that plunger. What we're gonna look for is a bunch of gunk all over this plunger. So on the last one, the issue was that there was a bunch of gunk here and the plunger was sticking. So the valve itself wasn't actually seized. Go ahead and take a small little screwdriver and there's going to be through here a spring and a plunger in here. And that plunger is supposed to move up and down. So if I push down on this, you guys can see it's moving up and down. So this one isn't seized. So it's either going to be seized inside of there, or it's going to be that vent that comes out the other end that's just simply clogged. So on both of them, the vents were clogged, but the plungers weren't really all that seized up. The other one had a lot of gunk in it. So I 
cleaned it thoroughly, and then I lubricated it. In the case of this one, it looks fairly clean. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and get a little bit of three-in-one oil, and we're gonna be putting some three-in-one oil in there, and we're going to reassemble everything. So I've gone ahead and put some three-in-one oil in there. You guys can probably see it shining. I've also taken a little bit of three-in-one oil, and I've put it on this screen. What you wanna look for is the three-in-one oil to disappear into this main valley here. What that means is that that screen is clean. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and blow some compressed air through there just to make sure. So now that we know that everything is clean and the plunger itself is moving, we're going to go ahead and put this back inside of there. And you're going to want to fit it up to the center of that little plunger in there and it'll drop in place. And then we're just going to give it a little press. Now this doesn't depress a lot. It only depresses about that much. So you just want to make sure that it's centered and that it's a uh, well, relatively flush, and it should sit almost flush when you push it down like that. Now, before we reinstall our rubber diaphragm and our unloader valve, you're just gonna wanna check that the valves are clear. So what I'm gonna do is take my little blow gun here, and with the unloader valve in the loaded position, so sideways, you're gonna wanna come to this hole here and blow air in, and it should push your blow gun back because it shouldn't be allowing any air through to your throttle control. So it's gonna do something like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and open this valve assembly up to the unloaded position. And you're gonna come back to this little hole here and we're gonna blow air through and air should come out of the throttle control port. See, just like that. So we know that it's clean and free of debris. I've also gone ahead and blown out the main line here. So that is clean and free of debris. So we are now ready to reinstall our little diaphragm. And what I'm gonna do is just wipe this off because my workbench is kind of dirty, but I'm gonna go ahead and install the diaphragm into the unloader valve. And then we're going to go ahead and drop this back down on top of the rest of the valve assembly and go ahead and get our screws reinstalled. So with our unloader valve reinstalled, we're just gonna go and put it back into the loaded position and then I'll remove this from the vise, go ahead and reinstall it onto our machine. Now, before I go ahead and reinstall this check valve back onto our compressor here, just to put it simply, if you're not draining your tanks a lot, you're gonna get rusty water going through here and it's just gonna cause a lot of corrosion and it's going to end up seizing that plunger inside of there. So the little plunger that you saw me pushing on is just simply gonna get a bunch of corrosion on there and it's gonna seize in place. A lot of times, like I said, guys, it's just simply a clogged vent, but for the time it takes me, I go ahead and pull them apart. I make sure that the check valve moves up and down and I lubricate it with a little bit of three-in-one oil. For the time it takes, then I kind of have a guarantee. And like I said, I did the exact same thing to this whole valve assembly and this one works perfectly fine. And I can show you a quick little video of me just taking it through the cycles. Now, before I go ahead and reinstall this valve assembly onto the tank, I wanna take a little bit of what's known as pipe thread compound, it's referred to. It's kinda of like a liquid Teflon tape. It's real uh, thick and sticky. And I'm just going to take a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit and run it in the threads of this valve assembly. It'll prevent any air leaks from happening. So we're going to take this valve assembly and we're going to drop it on top of the little plunger and the spring. Go ahead and get your bottom fitting nice and tight. And then we can go ahead and tighten up our top fitting as well. Go ahead and tighten that back down. And I now have my valve vent out of the ultrasonic cleaner. It is nice and clean. We can see screen on the other side. You don't have to worry about Teflon tape or anything for the vent side because it is just a vent. It's going to vent air. So we can go ahead and reinstall that onto the valve assembly. And then we'll go ahead and tighten that down and move on to our throttle control. Now, when they install these throttle controls from the factory, they like to load them up with red Loctite. I don't like using red because it's harder to get off for a guy like me to service. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of Permatex blue thread locker. You guys can see there, it's medium strength. So it will prevent this from loosening off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up some of this gunk here. And then I'll get some fresh blue thread locker on there and tighten that up. Once this is bolted down, you guys are gonna notice that the airline and the fitting is gonna be really close to the spark plug wire or the high tension lead here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back that off ever so slightly, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall this. And just make sure that the pin here is installed inside of your throttle arm here, and then we'll go ahead and get the 10 millimeter bolt installed. Okay, so I have the compressor outside. I've changed the engine oil, 600 mils of 10W30, and I'm using ISO 68 oil on the pump and I've changed that. 
all you want to do is fill the oil up to about the halfway mark on that little clear plastic window there. And I've also left the air filter off just so that I can see the action of the piston up there. So I'll fire this up and uh, we'll take it through its course. Okay, so it was running at high RPM. It just kicked down. So I'm gonna get on my impact gun to use up some air and we'll see if it kicks back up again. Perfect. So I'll probably end up doing that a couple more times. Just take it through its course, let it kick up, kick down. You guys will be able to see the piston move here. I can show you that happening. So this compressor is working as it should. The only thing I got left to do now is uh, I have to just readjust their muffler because they said it got bent. You guys can see where it's kind of hitting the fuel tank and they were worried about a safety issue with the gas tank heating up. So I'm gonna shut this down, drain the tank, and then uh, probably go ahead and fix that muffler. So as you guys can see, I do have three of them. These two are now complete. So I'm moving on to the silver one, which uh, my customer said was smoking real bad, probably burning oil. So change the oil in the engine, uh, the pump, and then I'll fire it up, let it run, make sure the air filter is good as well because sometimes they run a little rich if they get a clogged up air filter. As for the engines, if you guys wanna see me clean and rebuild a carburetor that these GX160 engines take, then you can click on the link in the top right of your screen. And I have a nice video on how to clean and rebuild one of those, as well as how one of these carburetors work. If you're ever interested in checking that out, I will also link that in the description down below. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get all three compressors up and running again. On the black compressor, the check valve was starting to get seized up a little bit just for from all that debris. On the blue one, the check valve vent was also clogged, but I went ahead and lubricated that valve assembly as well. And on the silver one, it ended up having a leaky needle valve on the carburetor, which flooded the crankcase with fuel. So all that fuel and oil ended up making its way into the cylinder head, and that's why it was smoking. So I went ahead and changed the oil, changed the spark plug, ended up replacing the carburetor because a needle valve replacement didn't solve the leaking issue for some reason. Maybe it had a crack in there somewhere. I wasn't too sure, but I gave my customer a good deal on the carburetor. I get these wheelbarrow compressors all the time from various roofing companies that bring their equipment to me for service. And generally speaking, nine times out of 10, the clogged check valve is one of the main reasons why the engines don't kick back up. Apart from that, you guys basically just wanna be running fresh, clean air filters on your pumps because again, all that dust and debris from the work site is gonna make its way through the pump down into the check valve, and then it's gonna clog that vent and you're gonna be running into this issue. So a quick way to prevent that is just run clean air filters. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.